guys, so you feel really far away. I feel like this is definitely a different, like, frame than I usually have. Today I'm going to be doing the Darker Shade of Magic book tag and also just talking about meeting Victoria Schwab and going to her book signing and all of that fun stuff. So I want to put all of the covers back on my books, so I'm just going to be talking about the book signing while I do that because multitasking is a great invention. Alright, so when I went to go to the book signing, I was stuck in like 5 o'clock traffic and the book signing was at 7 and I was basically freaking out the entire time on the freeway that I was going to be late. But I wasn't, not really. I got there before she walked out, so that's what really matters. She signed that one with my name. The deal with the book signing was that she would sign three with your name on it, and then all of the rest she would just sign. Like, she would sign any number of books, but only three with your name. And so the ones that I got with my name were A Conjuring of Light, This Savage Song, and Vicious. In case you're wondering what Victoria Schwab's signature looks like if you couldn't make it to one of the events, um, here it is. You can try to forge it into your own books if you're super creative and talented like that. Um, you know, whatever floats your boat. So at the signing, just a couple of details that I remembered and wanted to talk about, and even if you don't want to listen, this video can just be kind of like my documentation of what happened. So one of the questions that somebody asked is, are you more of a plot writer or a character writer? And like, do you focus more on the world or the characters? And she was like, I am a firm believer that the world is a character in of itself. And I was like, yes, queen! And how a lot of writers show their fantasy formation through um, clothing or how transportation even and personality and wording but she shows it through language primarily and how important language is to her so she has three different languages in the Shades of Magic series and she her and her editor came up with all of them and like that alone is incredible to me congrats for you making up a language the next thing that she talked about was how she started writing and I think she said that when she was 12 or 13 she wrote a story and she said that this should basically tell you what kind of person she is she wrote a story and it was about the angel of life and the angel of death and the angel of life was always being loved by the citizens and everything, you know, because he's the angel of life and not of death. So the angel of death got jealous and killed the angel of life. And because he killed the angel of life, everybody died because there was no life. And then he was standing like at the edge of the cliff where he pushed him off and was like, I don't even know if I feel better now. She also talked about how she writes all of her female characters as Slytherins and all of her male characters as Hufflepuffs because she got tired of the narrative of all of these girls having so much power and having to give it up for like the greater good. And so she was like, if a girl has power, she's allowed to be selfish with that power. And so a lot of her female characters are selfish with that power and I just really enjoyed that unique take on it. And lastly, one of my favorite things that she talked about was she has an issue, well, not even an issue, I wouldn't call it an issue, a habit of buying dogs and cats. And so she'll buy all of these, she'll not even buy, adopt all of these animals from like horrible situations or unsafe, just not the best of situations for an animal. And then she's like, well, I gotta travel now. So she'll just send them to her parents in France and be like, hey, I'm sorry, here's another dog. And her parents are like, you have to stop doing this. Like, you can't just keep buying dogs. But I, for one, am a uh, giant supporter of endlessly buying dogs. So now that my bookshelf is like slightly back to normal and I now have a glorious Lee Bardugo, Ale Alexandra Bracken, and Victoria Schwab, like, shelving unit over here. Um, I will be doing the Darker Shade of Magic book tag. I completely forgot whose channel I saw this on, to be completely honest. I just googled Darker Shade of Magic, Magic book tag because I felt like standing here and talking wouldn't be enough. So, here we go. So this tag is based off of the Londons of the Shades of Magic series. So the first question is, Grey London, what is an underrated book that packs a punch? And for this one, I'm going with the Foxhole Court yet again. So, um, I realize that I've never really given a summary of this book despite how much I talk about it. So, Neil Justin is our main character in this book and he really loves Exy. And Exy is kind of like a lacrosse soccer mashup of a sport. It's not real. I want it to be real. I would want to be on the team, but as of right now, it is not a real sport. And he is a runaway and so he's just trying to find his way through life and then he gets thrown into this team and it's just kind of like how all of their personalities clash more than mash to be completely honest. And it's just wonderful and beautiful but it does have all of the trigger warnings possible. So if you have any questions about specific trigger warnings, I will be happy to answer them to keep you feeling safe but it does have a ton of trigger warnings. Red London, what is a book that left you feeling really good? <laughs> a Conjuring of Light. Seriously, there's like 
the most beautiful book, but I'm going to talk about it more in my wrap up, so let's ignore that. Uh, the Percy Jackson series by Rick Ray Orton. It's just reading a book that you love during your childhood is just real comforting, and the storyline and the characters feel so, like, real to me, and they're just comfortable, like, places to go back to. Even if I don't feel like reading a brand new book, if I want to read something that I know more about and I just feel comfortable with, Percy Jackson is the series. White London, what is a book that drained you? The Reader. Black London, what is a book that consumed your life? The Throne of Glass series, primarily when Manon came into the picture. Burke's book wasn't, like, breathtaking or anything, um, but you can tell that it was her first book compared to, like, A Court of Mist and Fury now. You can see the difference in the improvement that she's made in her writing style, but when Manon came into the picture, I just fell in love and now I'm a non-trash. I feel like the witches came in. I know a ton of people thought about during Era Fire, they were like, I don't care about this Manon chick, I want to get back to Anne's story. But personally, when I was reading it for the first time, I was bored with Anne's part of the story, and I was only wanting the Manon chapters. Now I go back and I love the whole book. Era Fire is an incredible book. It's probably one of my favorites in the series. So I hope you enjoyed this video for today. I am I know it's not much, but it's just throwing something out there because this weekend's kind of busy. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have a wonderful day or night or whatever time it is, wherever you are, and thank you for watching. Hey guys, today I am going to be doing the, I don't know the name of this book tag. <laughs> just kidding. The Birthstone book tag. Don't mind me, I'm an idiot. Be doing the Darker Shade of Magic book series tag crap, mm, cool.